guys, it's Buckeye Bunny, the Fortnite mom who'd rather be dropping from the bus than shopping till I drop. Today we are going to be looking at playing Fortnite on mobile. For those of you who are new to Fortnite or considering playing on mobile, there was a lot I didn't know when I first started and I thought I would share it with you. I started playing on the phone that you see here. This is a Samsung Galaxy Note 9. It is a larger phone, so that has both the advantage of giving you a larger screen size and the disadvantage of being more cumbersome and heavy to hold. So I have tried it with a controller. I have a SteelSeries Stratus Duo controller and I will show you how it works with that in a little while. And I will share with you the HUD that I currently use. It took me a long time to find a HUD that would work with a large phone and my smaller hand size yet kept the combat and building buttons accessible and fairly easy to use. Now, please, please, please realize that I am not touting myself as a good builder in Fortnite whatsoever. I'm really bad and you will see how slow I am at building, but that is not the point of this video. I just want to share with you what it looks like on mobile and just the basic gameplay, and also comparing that to using a controller on mobile. So let's get started. So this is the HUD that I currently use. I am playing Three Finger Claw. Now I know that Four Finger Claw is much better and I have tried that, but my phone weighs about 300 grams and it just was too tiring after a while for my wrists and my hands. So. I just use my left thumb and my left index finger and then my right thumb and then I use my right index finger to help support the phone along with my other fingers. So that's just what works for me. I know I would be better if I could play four finger claw or even more fingers. I know there are so many pro players who even on phones will use many fingers, but I'm just not that talented and I'm old. So three fingers is about as much as I can do. The first thing you might notice is that there are two fire buttons. There's one on the top left where my index finger is and then one on the bottom right where my right thumb is. Now I use the one on the left most of the time. That's how I fire my weapon and use my harvesting tool. But I have the one in the bottom right where my thumb is because when in building mode that turns to the building placement tool. So I can use my thumb and select the type of building structure I want to use. I can steer and aim where I want it to go and then I can use my right thumb to also place it where I want it. And instead of the weapons bar, I traded that in for the individual buttons and so I was able to put them in kind of an L shape. And I did, for building, I have my weapons one and four, and you can change it to whatever you want, but I have those as they always stay weapon because I have all of the building buttons I need over here anyhow, so I don't really use these buttons for building, but I have them there in case I want to use them. But that way when I am building, if I quickly want to grab a weapon out, I can just press one of those buttons and I also have my harvesting tool down below if I quickly want to switch back. I'm sure there is a more efficient arrangement that I could be making, but for right now, this is what I've been using and it's been working and I might make fine adjustments at a later date. And then we have the jump and the crouch, the aiming, the editing, and the rotate building materials. So go into your settings and your HUD and scroll up to see the extra buttons and play around with the placement of them. See what works for you. It has taken me about four or five HUDs to get to the point where I feel fairly confident that this is going to set me up to be the most successful that I can be. And that might not be very successful, but it does take a lot of practice and a lot of trial and error to find what works for you. So if you want to try this HUD, go ahead and pause the screen, take a screenshot, whatever. Give it a whirl and see what you think. Here is the SteelSeries Stratus Duo 
Bluetooth controller and the SteelSeries Smart Grip attachment to hold the phone to the controller. I didn't think my three and a half inch wide phone was going to fit in the Smart Grip, but it does. Now this is a Bluetooth controller. You turn it on on the controller and then turn the Bluetooth on on your phone and it will pair them together. It really was a pretty seamless experience. Nothing to download. It is a little bit heavy, I will say. I have a big phone. It wouldn't be such an issue if you had a smaller phone. What I like about the controller is the overall layout and button setup is very similar to a lot of other controllers, such as the Nintendo Switch Pro controller that I have. So it didn't take that long to learn the basics. I'm still adjusting to the aiming on the right joystick. It just seems a little bit touchy and I might need to adjust my settings further. But overall you get a much clearer picture because your fingers and hands aren't covering the screen. So I do like that a lot. What I don't like is on my phone, sometimes the screen times out when I'm using the controller. And I don't know if this is an issue with my phone or the game with the controller. So I am still waiting for SteelSeries to get back to me on hopefully a workaround for this. You'll see it happen here shortly. And it's really annoying. You're in the middle of a game. Yeah, see? <laughs> and you could be in the middle of fighting someone and then you can't see them anymore. So that's one reason why I don't play with this controller very often. I just haven't figured out how to make that issue go away. And on mobile, you are still battling against people who are playing on giant iPad screens using eight, nine, ten fingers. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you are playing Fortnite mobile, not only are you going up against people who may be on iPads or tablets with large screens, but you add a controller and then you also have the added disadvantage of being placed into lobbies that have Nintendo Switch players in addition to mobile players. And the people on Nintendo Switches could be using their giant big screen TV. So it's almost like if you are going to use a controller on Fortnite mobile, you really need to practice a lot in playground and creative and get good in order for you to be at less of a disadvantage and to be more competitive with the people who might be on iPads and Nintendo Switches. So for that reason, in addition to the heft of it and the hassle of having to have the controller with you and making sure it's charged, though it does have an impressive 20 hour battery life, I think. I've actually never had to charge mine. It's just easier, in my opinion, to take your phone with you. If you have a few minutes here or there, grab your phone out, play a quick game of Fortnite, take it to bed with you, play a game in bed. The controller is a nice option to have, and I probably will use my more once and if I figure out the issue with my screen timing out while I'm using it. So there you have it. You've seen how this old lady plays Three Finger Claw on Fortnite Mobile using a phone. What it looks like to have the SteelSeries Stratus Duo controller attached to a phone and playing Fortnite. And the HUD that I've been using on Fortnite Mobile. If you've enjoyed this video, please clickety click the little thumbs up button, comment and subscribe, and let's watch me die. Oh, again.